Hey, what's going on, DDO players? Axel here. Welcome to part two of my DDO retrospective series where I look back in time and give my thoughts and share my experiences with prior updates. If you haven't seen part one yet, definitely check that out. I'll put a link to the description below. In part one, I gave my thoughts and shared my experiences with updates 11 through 14. And in this video, I'll be starting with update 15. So let's go ahead and get into it. Update 15 was the Druid's Deep update. This gave us a new adventure pack in the Forgotten Realms. At this point, Forgotten Realms was still extremely new. This was the first update following Menace of the Underdark. So this adventure pack helped fill out the area. We didn't have tons of content over there yet. And this update was Druid themed to celebrate the Druid class, which was just released in update 14. And we also saw this with the artificers the also the artificers pack a lot of the times it seems like the, the developers will theme a update over around a new class or sometimes a new enhancement like we saw at epic through rail cove when we got the uh swashbuckler and the bar bard enhancements remade we saw epic through rail cove in the same update so they often try to to fit themes in here with other changes in classes or races so let's talk about the adventure pack it was, it's okay. It was nice content to fill out um, Forgotten Realms at the time. It had some nice, some nice items in it. The, the, uh, the, ra the wraps that dropped in, I believe it's Thorn and Paw, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a very nice set of monk wraps that were very much valued for quite a while. Other than that though, there wasn't a ton of stuff. There was some, a few other nice items but nothing crazy. The experience, I think one thing people didn't like about this pack, and one thing I remember is the the uh, experience wasn't all that great, and they did later on boost it, but it, there wasn't a whole lot of reason to, to run these from an XP standpoint, but the loot was actually pretty good at the time. Unfortunately, it's all it's all outdated today, but it's at the time it was pretty good. We also got some updates to the daybreak uh, ritual which was a new challenge we saw in update 15 the introduction of the monster manual and I don't know about you guys but I have never really paid a lot of attention to the monster manual but it's something that it's it gives you something to do other than the main content other than just leveling or collecting items and there's also some rewards if you aren't aware, if you've never gotten into the monster manual, check it out. There's some astral shard rewards, there's creature companion rewards if you kill a certain number of a certain type of creature. There's a lot of cool stuff over there and it's a very pen and paper themed thing to just help the game get more of a pen and paper aspect really. It's something that always seemed missing from the game so it makes sense to introduce it here. I don't think it's been a super hit with the player base, but there are definitely a lot of players who like it. It's been been kind of mixed for me though. I, like I said, I don't really bother with Monster Manual too much. We also saw in update 15, the return of Maybar, which I'll have to check, but I think this might have been, actually, I think this was the second to last time we saw Maybar. And as of today, we, we have no Maybar anymore. As, as you guys know, they replaced it with with a, another event because Maybar, while fun, it had a lot of lag problems, especially the the the, the in raid. It was just oh man, it was just a lag fest. So they had to kind of get rid of it because I don't I just don't think the servers can really handle it at this point in the game with all the all the updates we've had to Epic Destinies and all the additional calculations we have in the game now than we did five years ago. So that's all for update 15. On to update 16 now. We saw a a new adventure pack called the High Road of Shadows, which I actually really like. I don't know why. I just I have fun with these quests. I really like Detour. I know it's kind of a straight path, just kill stuff, but for some reason I've liked it. I don't know why I like this area, but I, I do. The wilderness area is pretty nice. It's really easy to go in there and get your explorers, all except for one where you have to find access to the I believe it's the an upper portion of the map which you have to try to find a a portal for that but other than that it's pretty easy to get your explorers and your your rares and such so it's a it's a fun little adventure area but the, the XP has been okay nothing crazy we did see in this update a new epic Dex destiny also the primal avatar which the most important thing about primal avatar is rejuvenation cocoon this was a game changer for a ton of classes any class that doesn't have great 
self-healing built into it into that class and we saw more with this update the more, more movement into the direction of everyone is self-sufficient everyone uh, we don't need classes or really to be dependent on other people for roles cocoon was a big game changer gave a lot of a lot of melees were able now to just equip some kind of spell points items in this used cocoon and not really need a healer near as much you definitely didn't need a healer near as much in update 16 as you did in prior updates and that trend continued we saw something which i think was really really bad bad uh, design choice for the game the astral shard system was introduced in update 16 which i think just has been oh i, I really just don't see any good about it i what this did is it overnight it invalidated platinum which to, up to this point had been the primary currency in ddo in astral shard you can only buy from the store they don't drop from the game except in very I, they don't drop in chests that I know of, and you can get some, a little bit from the monster manual, but for the most part, you have to you have to buy these from the store. And I've just never liked that. I think you should the default currency. I just think should drop in the game. I just I just do. It's it's hard nowadays to sell stuff for platinum because platinum just isn't worth as much. All the good stuff is now selling for astral shards, and I see what they're going with with this system that they wanted to facilitate trade because between people who had money but made it, maybe didn't have time and people who had time, but maybe didn't have money. So the people with a lot of time could ground out these items. They could put these items on the astral shard house. And then the people with a lot of money to spend on the game, but not a lot of time to play it could spend their money on buying astral shards and then buy these items on the astral shard house. So turbine would be getting a little cut of, you know, people who have time versus money. People, they would, they're basically profiting here a little bit more from trading the trade system than they did before. But again, I, I, I just think this is pure monetization. And yes, the game needs to make money. I just, it and I can't harp too much on them for doing that because they have to find new sources of revenue. Guys, don't get too upset about stuff like this. The game has to make money. If the game doesn't make money, we have no game. So it's a necessary evil, but I don't like this because the Astral Shard system, I think they could have found a, a better way to, they could have found alternate routes of monetization, I think, rather than choose one that really hurts trading game so let's move on to that's about all for update 16 let's move on to update 17 which was a really good update one of the one of the most successful updates in the past five years for sure we which was a return to giant hold this gave us epic giant hold we got an epic version of wilderness area which was awesome something we're not getting too much these days. We got a new raid fall of truth, which was really cool at the time. And I think they hit it out of the park with the, the loot system in this raid. I've always really liked it. The way the loot works in fall of truth, if you're not aware is you can, you can get, there's three levels of the items. There's hard, there's normal versions of the items, hard and then elite. So you can run say normal and you would only get the, normal version in the chest but if you ran hard you would maybe the hard version of the raid in the chest and you could upgrade from the different versions with combinations of heroism which dropped in the raid of course higher higher numbers of these dropped in the higher the higher difficulty levels and they also also dropped in the cotton web cotton the web raid but not near as much so you could you could still get the same loot from the normal running normal it would just take more time so if you want to get the loot quicker you could run elite and instantly drop in get in the chest and elite fully upgraded version of whatever it is you're looking for the loot at the time was very good it was a lot of some of it was best in slot as i recall we also saw a we also saw a revamp of the augment slot system in this update which they've continued to utilize more and more and now we see legendary green steel which is based around augment slots we also saw additional work on shard exchange and we saw introduced into the game in this update the daily dice this is the thing you click every login which you get a silver roll free if you're vip you get one gold roll per week free and there's some okay ish prizes on it most of the time though you just get a small amount of experience points and then you know some kind of potion that you'll 
probably not want, but you know, it's free. It's, it, it, it serves its purpose. It gives, it's to give player, the whole reason this exists is to give reason, reasons for players to log in every day. They want you to log into the game consistently. And if daily dice can help you do that, odds are you're going to play the game more. And if you play the game more, odds are you're going to spend more money on the game. So it's a very, it's a very fair and very smart marketing tactic. Daily Dice gets you to log in more frequently. It's something you can only get once every 24 hours. You can't come into the game once a week and get seven rolls. You have to come in every day and get your roll or you lose it. So you feel almost compelled to log into the game. And a lot of players do log into the game just to get their Daily Dice and then they log out. Even if they don't have time to play that day, they might just take five minutes to log in and get their Daily Dice and, and log out. And even though the Silver Rolls will really lose their value in high epic levels, the at low heroic levels, the XP is actually pretty nice, especially if you can get lucky and get, say, a 2,000 XP gem. That's That means a lot at low levels. And for players who may be running new characters, the potions and things that drop can be nice. We also saw in this update a change to the collectible systems. We saw new turning costs and new rewards. Unfortunately, I don't think that's panned out too well. Collectibles, it's not something that is a big focus on the game. The rewards aren't all that great. Now there are some exceptions, but for the most part, the collectibles rewards aren't very good and players aren't compelled to pick up all the various collectibles that are in the game. And I would hope they give these a second pass to give us more uses to actually pick up the collectibles. Personally, I still pick up collectibles in quests, even though I'm, I know I'm not gonna spend them more, more than likely. I just can't walk past the flashing collectible and not pick it up. Maybe that's OCD. I don't know what it is, but I still pick them up. Hopefully someday in the future, we'll see an additional pass where they make collectibles even more valuable and give us more compelling reasons to actually pick them up. One of the great things about update 17 is all the value we got in this update. If you already own giant hold, you got tons of new epic content. Now it wasn't free uh, new quests, but they were epic fired versions of old quests and the developers epified a lot of them. There were around 10, quests and giant hold that were turned epic which was just awesome at the time it really helped fill out the epic levels and these are quests that are still run all the time today for your mid epics when players are leveling these are run all the time they're great xp we've got some nice sagas out there now that can really help with the xp just really good quests a lot of variety here so guys, that's going to do it for this video. Next time I will continue with part three. I'll start with update 18. Appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed the video, please throw me a like and subscribe as always. Thanks for listening and I will see you next time.